Hi guys, my name is Sean Hensler. I'm the CEO of Hensler Surgical and I'm going to be going through the Assure test, which is our new FDA authorized test. We can finally actually roll out to you guys and I'm going to be going through multiple things in this video. I'm going to be going through the package insert, maybe going through all the nooks and crannies of this thing. So we all know exactly what we're getting into, what we can tell people, what we can tell that this thing does. And um, not only that, I'm going to go through the test, I'm going to do the test on myself, show you how different aspects of the test is run, and that will be hugely beneficial in explaining not only the dynamics of the test, the IgM, IgG theory, and also the uh, antibody discussion that we need to go through to make sure we understand what this test is actually going to be doing and what we're teaching everyone. This test we have is going to be applicable for most commonly uh, hospitals, urgent care centers, even uh, health fairs, uh, family medicine doctors, those individuals who have access to CLIA labs, and I'll be going through that shortly. Uh, these tests are quick, they're available, they are point of care, they are rapid, and you don't have to wait anywhere from four to seven days to even get the results back. Uh, they're real time uh, and it does gauge the immune response. So when you're looking at which population you want to be hitting, you want to be working on those, uh, those doctors, those uh, clinicians, uh, PAs, NPs that have the ability to have access to a CLIA lab and all the tests we have all the sales we do, a CLIA number will be required for us to take in, but this test is a great Uber screening test. It's a great first line test for uh, identification of antibodies for the SARS COVID 2. So, I wanted to go through the uh, intended use of this device. So, it is a what's called a lateral flow chromatographic immunoassay or a LFIA test. This is, uh, this is important to know because it is a test for the qualitative detection, not the quantitative. It's not detecting the amount or the number of antibodies, it's detecting the presence of antibodies for IgM and IgG for SARS-CoV-2. Um, it is uh, testing whole blood so it's, uh, there's, uh, there's venipuncture methods from other competitive companies Ours is testing whole blood. Um, it is uh, for identifying individuals with an adaptive immune response to the SARS-CoV-2, indicating recent or prior infection. One thing to make sure, it is unknown at this point how long the antibodies persist following the infection. This is part of this testing process, the research, the R&D of this virus. This this virus is a ninja. I mean, it just works differently, and then it seems like once we have it figured out, it mutates to a different uh, to a different form. It's uh, it's zoonotic in nature, which means it's uh, it's animal based. One of the big factors here is not everyone that comes through the door is going to have to have a molecular or PCR test. Now, that is all based on the clinician's critical medical decision. Uh, so that decision is made based on the patient's presentation, their history, etc. So I'm not here to go against what they're going to be uh, assessing as, as what's appropriate for what test to use. If a patient comes in and they have an exposure or they have an immune response to starting out, this test is a great first line test. It doesn't have to go right to using the nasal swab, uh, going on the back of the nasopharynx, or doing the antigen tests, which do have, in its own right, plenty of false positives and false negatives. And our test does differ, whereby our test is assessing for an immune response from the antibodies from the uh, COVID virus. It'll also find virus uh, activity within the IgM realm and the other tests are more diagnostic and they're looking for the proteins or looking for various, they're looking for the virus itself. So ours is not doing that. Ours is assessing what the virus is actively doing, which is giving off antibodies. And then 
finding those antibodies as they are related to the SARS-CoV-2. The IgG and the IgM antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 are generally detectable in the blood within several days after infection. The duration of time is not well characterized. Again, this is still being tested. The laboratories that will be using this is CLIA laboratories um, and these laboratories, the key word for this is the lab has to be able to handle moderate to high complexity tests. So that means we can't just sell this test to, to Joe Blow who works down the road and they have some employees and they want to do some testing. They want to just read it there and just see if their patients are positive or not. It doesn't work that way. Um, the FDA won't allow it and uh, not only uh, will um, well, I'd be in trouble if I went ahead and allowed that kind of activity, which I won't. It will be uh, falling back on you as well, not only as a public health concern, you'll be deemed as a uh, public health risk by not following the instructions of the FDA. This test has to be done uh, through and read by appropriate people and the laboratory personnel, the laboratory um, staff that has been trained for this is who is going to run the test. They're not going to read it, they're going to run it. So that's important to know. Um, this test again is not uh, for confirmatory testing, that's for PCR antigen testing. And of course this is, only, this is uh, used under the Food and Drug Administration's Emergency Use Authorization. I wanted to go over the kind of symptoms that you typically would see with this virus. It does mimic uh, flu, influenza, multiple things, uh, even allergies. Sneezing, coughing, it's an airborne virus and the incubation period is estimated between 2 and 14 days. There's been a lot of studies on asymptomatic patients if they can spread this thing. Um, that is more positive towards Yes, they're in an asymptomatic latent phase. It's uh, the antibody for the COVID has not hatched, if you will. So they can still spread it, which is why if someone has an exposure, they'll go and test somebody with antibody or with antigen testing or with uh, PCR because they're looking for the virus itself. However, it needs to be at a detectable level. Many times in early stages, it's not at a detectable level. So that's why there's issues with false positives, false negatives, or even negatives uh, completely. But this is why if symptoms do persist, testing is redone. Um, detection of IgM is indicated for finding recent infections. And uh, IgG antibodies appear in the later stage of the infection. And that's what our test does. It's a lateral flow immunoassay assessing for those two factors and will give you the presumptive diagnosis of COVID-19. So to explain scientifically how this is working is during testing, you're going to put the blood in the sample well. Okay, great. The blood is dropped in there. It's ready to follow it, to take its path up the cassette to react with the and bind with the membrane and its conjugates to tell us if we're positive and negative. So it binds with the SARS-CoV-2 antigen and these are gold colloid coated, coated particles within the test cassette. When you add the buffer and the buffer then binds with the blood, it travel, it starts its path up the cassette. It's going to bind with these membranes and these conjugates are going to make antigen antibody complexes. At that point, the complex will migrate through the nitrocellulose membrane by capillary action. When the complex meets the line of the corresponding immobilized antibody, that's IgM and IgG, it'll then actually follow into the control and the blue line that is currently is what you'll see will turn to a red line. It needs to be completely red. That means that it has been activated with the perfect amounts of blood, buffer, and the membranes have reacted and binded and made these conjugates proper so it can actually function as anticipated. If the red line is, is uh, not there, let's say it's blue, half blue, half red, 
it's not any good. That means it wasn't run properly. You know, you got to keep this thing at room temperature. We'll go over that later. So it's important that that is, uh, it is critical that we make sure that that test is, has a, has turned from blue to red. Okay. The red line will always appear indicating the proper volume has been added and the membrane wicking has occurred. There's always a few warnings and precautions that go along with any test. Um, there are a few with this. Um, it's, uh, it's important to understand that this test has been authorized by the FDA under an EUA for the laboratory certified under CLIA. And that meets the requirements of moderate to high complexity testing. Okay, it can't be a CLIA waived test. If someone has a CLIA waived number and they want to run this test, negative. It has to be with a lab that uses moderate to high complexity. Okay, it's for in vitro diagnostic use only. However, I use the word diagnostic very, very carefully because this is not a diagnostic test. It gives you a presumptive diagnosis of uh, SARS-CoV-2. Puts you in that ballpark of uh, someone may in fact have the antibodies uh, and may have the viral response, the immune response for the virus itself. Also, heat and cold can actually affect this thing. You want to keep the cassette with, at room temperature. You don't want to freeze it. You don't want to have it in the, and you don't want to have it hot within, you know, the heat can affect the membranes and thus can affect the way that the conjugation, the way the binding, the way that the test is supposed to be run. So we, all, we you always want to make sure that it is at room temperature. Also, you want to make sure your buffer is clear. You don't want it turbid or discolored because it could be indicative of, uh, of, uh, of bacteria that could be present in it, some type of microbial infection, some type of microbial contamination. You don't want to freeze it, as I mentioned, and you want to take a look at the expiration date. There are expiration dates on these, so make sure that the expiration date is good to go and um, you want to make sure that your expiration date is within normal range. The expiration date is also on each cassette so make sure that you're examining that. Now that we've gone through the meat and potatoes of this thing we get to a bit of the fun part which we get to go through the test and I'm going to show you the test and show you how it works so it'll be uh, this will be a much more lighter discussion so when you receive the box of 20 of the cassettes you're going to have uh, 20 of the individual pack text uh, test devices you're going to have 20 disposable pipettes I'm going to show you there's a little trick to how much you know you want to make sure there's five microliters and I'll show you where that is you're going to have a buffer you're going to have a package insert and you're going to have, you're supposed to have negative and positive controls that come in the box. Unfortunately, they do not come in the box. I learned that today. I will be having these uh, positive and negative controls within the next seven days. And these uh, controls are, are very important to have uh, because a CLIA lab will run through and do a positive test and a negative test on one of the cassettes to make sure that it's working as it should. The negative controls are lyophilized uh, human serum samples, so that will go all the way through, and the uh, go, go all the way through, meaning nothing should be reacting. With the positive controls, there's lyophilized IgG and IgM against SARS-CoV-2. These are uh, animal-based samples. So it will actually react to both IgM and IgG, and will once they pop positive, you'll be able to feel confident that it's working as it should. The CLIA lab will require this. This is something that they need and, and we will make sure we have it available. This is the ECO test or the ASSURE test. It's a rapid diagnostic test. One thing to note is if they're questioning the ASSURE aspect of it on the back, labeled right here. It says Assure Tech Technologies has everything you need that falls along with the EUA. It has the lot number here and the expiration date. 
and of course here's the temperature where you want to keep it at room temperature so it's important that you make note of these things and these are written in every time you do a test this is the pipette that comes with the test if you'll notice it has this very skinny area right through here this is what you want to fill this is five microliters okay so you'll you'll suction up the amount of blood up to this point here and then when you're at that point you're going to go ahead and put all of that blood on the sample well so that's going to be your determining factor of your volume it's going to come with the safety land set spring loaded this is going to be your buffer when you're ready to do the drops of the buffer you'll simply just unscrew the cap here and then you're going to gently press down on this area here and don't squeeze it super fast just nice and gentle and do two drops after the blood has been placed on the sample well and of course the alcohol pads this is the Assure or Eco test for the COVID-19 that we're going to be utilizing that is FDA authorized you're going to have the sample well here this is where you're going to put the one drop of blood and two drops of buffer. There's not going to be anything to close. There isn't any other activity to do. It's simply drop and go. And then as soon as you put in the drop of buffer, that's when your timer starts. 15 minutes. You don't read it before 15 minutes. You don't read it after 20 minutes. If you read it before 10 minutes, it's erroneous. That's what the package insert says, however it is a 15 minute test, so run it to the 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes is that window. You have your IgM, IgG, and you can see there's already a line there that is blue that is on the control line. And when it turns completely red, that's how you know that it's been run properly. If it does not turn completely red, you need to discard the test and redo it. You've either had not enough blood or too much buffer or not enough buffer. It needs to be a full red line, not partially blue, partially red, a full solid red line. We're going to start with me undergoing the test itself. My finger here. I'm going to take out the alcohol swab. I'm going to go in and wipe off the area you want to hit. Generally hitting right in the center of the finger is not advisable. It closes up very quickly. If you go to the side, it does a good job. Simply unscrew. This just unscrews and that's it. Okay. You're simply going to go ahead and put it right on the finger and press down. It auto ejects and it goes right back into the system. So you can see the blood is already raising up. So you'll raise some blood and you're going to wipe it off. Now I'm doing myself but this is always done with gloves but you're going to have CLIA personnel doing this. Now we're going to go ahead and pull up some blood here now I want you to watch here I go ahead and I'm, I'm squeezing in the pipette and I'm, I'm letting it back stop see I stopped right at the tip there okay At this point, you're going to go ahead and place this on the pipette, it's right within. One drop, one one thousand. Let it seep in, and then hit the second drop. As you can see, it's traveling up as it should. 
was a few seconds behind on that. Start the timer right when the buffer goes in. As you will see, the blue line now has been replaced with a red line. The red line is now proving that this test is being run as properly as it's supposed to be. As we're waiting here, a few points I want to make with this test is Within this time period, there's been discussion with some clinicians that have said, well, this test is 15 minutes. Uh, we could do the nasal swab in a few minutes and they can get out the door and then they're done. And they argue that 15 minutes is too long. Now, with every patient that comes in, there's charting that has to happen. There is... Uh, there's things that have to be done with the electronic medical records and such. This is the time when that can be done. So after the nasal swab is done, it takes it's quick and painful, and then the patient has to wait while you are, let's say I'm the patient, I'm there going to be waiting for all the paperwork to get completed, I'm going to be waiting for uh, the medical record to get complete and to get my instructions. When during this time frame, all that can be done during this time. So in 15 minutes, not only can the test be run, you can have everything ready and done, paperwork printed, the EMR complete. So when this test is done, you have a ham, you have a discussion with the uh, patient or the clinician will, and then they can move forward. So that is a uh, that's like one of those key factors. To touch on the process one more time, it's going to be one drop of blood and two drops of buffer. Remember to do one 1,000, two 1,000 before putting the second drop in. When you put the first drop in, you'll see it absorb and you don't want to overfill. So you want to watch it absorb completely into the, into the paper and then once it looks like it's absorbed, which could be up to two 1,000, then go ahead and put the second drop in so you don't inundate the blood sample. The membranes that it passes through are encapsulated in this area right here. They're underneath here. So as it's traveling up the paper, it's going to be reacting to all the membranes here and then traveling up and it will have reactions with IgM or IgG within the 15 minute period if it is in fact positive for the acute phase or the actual specificity of IgG which is specific to SARS-CoV-19 with nearly 99 percent accuracy. Another point is many people say well if I have IgG positive and IgM is negative that means I'm immune. So the data is not supporting that we can say that as of yet. Because you have IgG and IgM, it does allude to the fact that you have in fact been exposed and had a past infection with COVID-19. Two different things, the specificities, uh, sensitivities, things that are really interested to the uh, parties that are going to be wanting to use this for one they're going to want to know if it's FDA authorized secondarily they're going to want to know how accurate it is more questions they'll have is they'll say 
or ask if it's the same as a PCR test or the antigen test. Obviously, you know now it's different. Uh, what sets this, this test apart from others? Of course, the external controls, being able to see that blue to red, being able to have a, an immediate uh, differentiation of the test showing that it's being run accurately and properly is key. All the tests that I know of all are blank, like the tests you've seen before, and then the control just lights up. So there really isn't really anything that goes and shows you that it is it has it has a much higher specificity of it being run properly by by the way and the proprietary method with which this test is being run. Uh, when it comes to the CLIA labs, if you are looking for which labs to uh, maybe utilize, uh, mobile labs, uh, getting some CLIA personnel to come in, uh, these are people and laboratory personnel that are trained in moderate to high complexity tests. They can, you can hire them to come in and do the aspect of the test itself and the doctor will read it from there. So, or you can contract with the lab itself. But one of the sites we've used is www.medyellow.com. That's M-E-D-Y-E-L-L-O-W.com. And go to laboratory search and you can find anything. I mean, all the CLIA labs, you'll find the CLIA numbers, uh, the addresses. And if they're listed on this website, and this is where we are going to be going and doing our checks and measures to make sure that it is uh, an actual CLIA lab that has authorization, uh, it is going to be listed on this. In closing, the specificity and the sensitivity for IgM and IgG are usually read in a few different ways. It's read as what is the IgM sensitivity and specificity with positive predictive and negative predictive and that's PPA is positive NPA is negative so these are your assessment guides uh, which has to deal with specifically sensitivity and specificity so the IgM sensitivity is hundred percent and the specificity for IgM is 98.8 the IgG sensitivity is 96.5 percent and the specificity is 100 percent and that's with the negative uh, predictive value so the combined sensitivity combined together is 100 percent sensitivity the combined specificity for both combined is 98.8 percent and it has zero percent cross reactivity with HIV so in closing Thank you again for your time. I know this is long-winded, but I wanted to go over every part about this test. I wanted you to understand it. I wanted you to know it. I would like you also to take the instructions for use. I want you to read it over it for yourself as, as well. You're gonna be responsible for making sure that you are passing on the right information and you are not uh, providing any scuttlebutt, if you will, that will be erroneous data that could in fact um, put us at risk for misinformation. Hope it's been great for you guys. Thank you again for your time and be safe and be well.